Hello. Well, you may remember I put up a film about the pole lavers tool bag. And I've had a couple of people actually ask me, well, what do I put in a pole lavers tool bag? And I thought, actually, let's just make a film of this because there are a few quite interesting things in my bag. This is a bit like one of the um, what's in my handbag type things, but I'll just take you through what I carry around in a pole lavers tool bag. So first thing is my holder with my pole lathe chisels. And I generally only use three chisels on my pole lathe. You may be wondering, this holder is a milk bottle and it has a bit of leather strapping just to tie it around my pole lathe. And it just means that if they're members of the public, I can keep the chisels off the ground out of harm's way. I'll show you the chisels. So they all have little leather covers again, just to make sure their edges are protected and to make sure people aren't injured by them. So there's a fairly standard skew chisel. So that's a standard wood turner's three quarter inch skew. And I use that for doing the beading on the pole lathe. Next chisel up is a far larger one. Again, a nice leather cover. And this one is like a planing chisel. So it is large, it's an inch and a half, this one, across. I'll just show that, you can see the kind of bevel on there. Corners beveled off. So I use this for planing actions on the pole lathe. And then the third one, oops, if I can find it, <laughs> is a roughing out gouge. So again, I'll show you that up close. So this is the one I use to start with, with on the pole lathe for getting the wood from the rough into roughly sort of smooth then I go over the planing chisel etc. That's my rounding gouge. Now quite a few people have asked me across the time can you use ordinary wood turners tools on a pole lathe? And the answer is well yes you can. They're not quite so good as a dedicated pole lathe's chisels but they will work, so if you've got them, just use them, frankly. It's better to have a go with something than not to worry and not, you know, not to actually give it a go. So if you've got some standard wood turners chisels, have a go. I mean, you can get ones comparable to these. These ones are very nice quality. They're Ashley Ills, made in England. They're not particularly expensive, and I certainly don't think they're expensive for what they are. They're not particularly fancy steel or anything, they're just nice, good quality chisels and they do the job. And well, what more do you need really? They're not sort of some clever, cyrogenically, you know, handled steel. They're just good, solid chisels. So those are my three pole lathe chisels and I have put a film up on fine tuning a pole lathe and get, getting the best from those chisels. Also in my milk bottle is a braddle for making holes in the end for mounting on the pole lathe and a bottle of honing oil. <laughs> People sometimes say, do you really go and buy a bottle of honing oil? You don't just use your car sump oil or something. And the reason is, it's a lovely refined oil. You'll get a lovely keen edge if you use an oil stone and it's in a nice sealing lid. So <laughs> I just find it convenient. And okay, oil stones are a bit old fashioned these days. If I had the budget, I would use diamond stones, nice big ones, but I don't. So. Um, Oil stones at the moment I find fine. I use water stones for my fine carving tools, but for pole laving, the, the oil stone is great. And if I'm out in the field, I have two forms of touch up. I have one of these little fork even sharpening stones, ceramic type stones, which is quite nice for getting an edge back on a tool. And the other real budget here is I use emery paper stuck to wood. So that's in my bag. And it's just a block of wood with various grits. So I've got 1200, 600, etc. of emery paper, and that gets edges back onto tools quite well. And for the round ones, I have round sticks, they're actually old chair legs that I've turned up, emery paper just stuck on with a bit of tape. And that actually gives you a really good way of getting your edge back on a tool, and it doesn't cost much money, which is great and it doesn't break down or need power. <laughs> so there you are, that's my emery sticks. But I, I do heartily recommend emery sticks if you're 
wanting to get tools to a nice fine paper cutting edge, which is what you ideally have. What else is in my bag? There's some rope, pole lavers rope, and some spare bungee, just in case you cut through what you're using or your rope breaks. Just bring the camera over, give you a peep inside. So this is my tool bag. You may remember this from the earlier film on leather restoration. So having got all the chisels out, there are a few more bits in here. So I'll pull the other bits out. Next up is rather a big tool for the bag. It's my fro. So wooden handle, a blade with some water pipe to cover the edge. It doesn't have to be particularly sharp to throw. It's used for splitting logs, cleaving out bits of wood. So it's welded and it's like a car spring bent round and then welded down the seam here. And that's a throw, very good for splitting the wood. Once you get a crack going with some wedges, you can split the wood out. I do carry wedges and a big club hammer with me as well for splitting out the wood. And then I use the throw to open up, open up the gaps. That's my throw. There's an ax uh, with a Bucklehurst leather cover on it. Quite a nice one, even with carving. And the axe, it's no ordinary axe actually. I don't know if you'll get this on camera or not. But it's called a side axe. So, completely flat, fat side. Because I'm right handed, bevel on this side. If I was left handed, it would work the other way. And the whole thing is quite skewed, if you look at that. And so is the blade. And the reason for that is so you can go down a log and shape it and the axe won't dig in because it's not got a bevel on one side. So you go down the log and you can take the branches off, you can then remove all the wood. And it's a nice light weight. Bearded axe, you just whip down, get all the bark and muck off. You can reduce the wood in diameter if you need to with that. Very nice handmade little axe, blacksmithed up. But, um, I like that. Nice. I like light axes. You can work fast with them and get nice accurate cuts. And that has a highly honed, very sharp edge, so it goes in my little cover, which I have a rabbit on. <laughs> so there you are, that's the axe. Uh, after the axe would come the draw knife. So again, very sharp edge, leather protected, and that's just a standard. This one is a Robert Sorby. 1941. So it's obviously ex war department, but just a nice, good quality bog standard draw knife. So I use that for planing off the bits of wood, taking them down in size. You'll see it on the other films. And then, well, there's not much else in here really. It, it sort of depends sometimes if I'm not doing pole lathe turning, I want to do a little bit of spoon carving. So there's a few spoon carving type tools. So there's one of my spoon carving knives. All my stuff has little leather covers these days, just to protect the blades. So these are ones that I blacksmith up. So this is one I've made. Turn the handle on a pole lathe, copper rivets, and the little forged up blade I've done. That's for doing the bowls, the spoons. There's a hollowing out one here. This is the one I put a film up on. It's been rather a popular film, actually, with three quarters of a million views. It's a BMW car spring. So there's a film I'm making. This is a spoon hollowing tool. And then what else do I have in my bag? I use another spoon knife that I've made, different shape blade, um, a leather tool roll. Now, <laughs> sorry, this is sounding a bit like a plug now. I do sell these on my website. But um, I keep my spoon carving stuff in these. So they're little tool rolls, and then they take the standard sort of, so there's a little Eric Frost spoon knife, a little leather cover bent round on it. I have a little, oh, little chip carving knife for doing detail on spoons. All my things, I say, have more leather covers. And then things like, oh, this one's a Hans Carlson little spoon knife. So 
all the sort of little stuff for spoon carving that I like to carry and a spoon wrapped in cling film just to keep it dry. That's the contents of my tool bag. So I hope you enjoyed seeing that. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching.